Welcome to How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships from True Story FM. Today, we'd like to introduce you to your paratoaster. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Seth Nelson, and as always, I'm here with my good friend, Pete Wright. Every now and again, we like to look inside the firm. We've introduced you to our attorneys. They're great, of course but it's possible the most important person to you behind the scenes is your divorce paralegal. Let me tell you, paralegals rock. They juggle, they schedule, they always have a bird's eye view of your case, what you need, when you need it. You really need to listen if you're about to go through a divorce on how to best use your paralegal. Today, we're gonna give you our very own Stacy Resinella. Stacy, welcome to the toaster. Thank you, Seth. Okay, Pete, before you get started, let me tell you. Okay. You always jump right in with questions. I do. But let me Mm -hmm. tell you how this went down today. I'm like, hey, Stace, what are you doing this afternoon? And she's like, oh, my God, I got all this stuff that you told me I had to get done. It's like a Friday. We got to get this stuff out, you know? (laughs) And I'm like, awesome. Let's take a break. You're going to be on the podcast. And she's like, what are you (laughs) talking about? I'm like, you're fine. You've gone through a divorce, which we're going to maybe touch on in how it relates to dealing with paralegals. But we're not going to talk about Stacy's divorce. That's like five shows worth of information on that one. Okay. Oh, more. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just need to back up just so Stacy knows. Stacy, we put you on the schedule with Seth's blessing like three months ago, and he just told you today that you're being on the show. Yes, he just kind of he he likes to kind of keep us all guessing. <laughs> Dream job, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> That's why you need a paralegal to keep the I, lawyer straight. That's exactly right. I so I uh, have been uh, very excited to have you on the show. Mo- first and foremost, because I think there's opportunity to talk a little bit of dirt about Seth. We'll save that maybe till later. Uh, but uh, we have mentioned the term paralegal on this show a number of times over the last. few few years, and we've never been able to talk about what the paralegal actually does. And my hunch is that people listening to this show who are thinking about divorce, who are nervous about the legal process, uh, are likely uncertain what a paralegal does. So let's talk about it. Let's talk. I want to know, what do you do? What makes you great at what you do? What can clients count on from you that they can learn to expect from you and and not have to deal with their lawyer. Uh, How are you a hero? That's really what I'm talking about. So I I think the the most important thing or one of the most important thing is a paralegal is kind of the liaison and the customer service person between the client and the attorney. Um, There's... that this position keeps the case moving, whether it's questions from the client, talking with opposing counsel, scheduling things, um, knowing how to serve people or, or do kind of the ins and outs and the more detailed um, kind of processes. That's that's what the paralegal does. Um, and And also, if you have a paralegal that's been in the client's shoes, then they have somebody there that understands that everything fluctuates day by day. And so a paralegal specifically in family law is, is not only, um, a legal professional, but they're also there, um, in understanding on what the client is actually going through and what kind of help that they're actually seeking. So, Pete, here's my best analogy on this. If you take someone who's in the hospital and the doctor comes in and says, well, I need an IV and we need to be running these fluids and stuff. Yeah. They're not the ones that come in and put the IV in and put the medication on and really. The paralegal does. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And then when like it's not going into that vein, the paralegal can say, I've been through this. I know I have a rolling vein, too. Let me try the other hand. And, you know, the. The doctors take all the credit with their fancy white coats and stuff, but we know who's really doing the work. It's the nurses. It's the floor nurses. It's the, those are the people. So they always know more and are more prepared than the doctors. Is that what you're saying? Is that the analogy that we're? Well, well yes. And they're getting the, the doctor <laughs> Do you ready. See how fast Stacey answered that question? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to my, welcome to my day, Pete. <laughs> Outstanding. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so what uh, I I can infer a certain sort of skill set uh, that would go into making a great paralegal. What do you think it is that drew you to this particular part of the field? So I already had a background in my my degree was in journalism. I'd been in journalism for a long time. Went to college, uh, graduated with a journalism degree. So writing and research. Totally in my background from the time I was probably 14. Mm-hmm. Um, spent a lot of time in marketing. And when I went through my own divorce, about three years into my divorce, I decided that my passion was not marketing. It was I wanted to use my talents with research and writing and my experience in my divorce And so I quit my job and I went out and found a job uh, in a family law firm. So it was basically my own personal experience um, that led me to wanting to help people and um, assist them through the divorce. I felt like my experience, I could relate to them. I knew what kind of questions they were going to ask. I could kind of um, anticipate how to respond because that's what I wanted. And that's the information that I was seeking when I was going through it myself. So my passion kind of changed and I wanted to do more and help people kind of through that rocky part because there is life on the other side. Once it's over, um, I wanted to be kind of the person that kind of helped them through it so that they could live a better life or um, be set for their future down the road. So that's the end of our show because yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> okay, so Stacey's wearing a red cape and she's sitting solving problems and saving the day. I, uh, you, we have, we've talked uh, in the past about some of the things Seth, <laughs> Seth has asked of, uh, of uh, his paralegals in history. I wonder if you could do a quick survey or review of some of the things, maybe the rarer things that you don't day to do day to day, but some of the things that you might be counted on to do to help clients through a particular frustrating thing. I don't want to say, what's the weirdest thing you've ever had to do as a paralegal? That seems a little bit too BuzzFeed to me, but you know, you get the idea. Well, we've got that one issue with the registered agent that we just dealt with. Yes, I don't even um, know what that I, means. What's a registered agent and why do I care? Okay, so being a lawyer, I'll answer that question. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> Sounds good. So another thing to know, Pete, as we go through this is, and Stacy's very good at this, is a paralegal is not allowed to give legal advice because that's what a lawyer can do. So a great paralegal such as Stacy will sometimes have to say to a client, that's a really good question. I can't answer that. I'll have to have the lawyer talk to you about it. Now, I assure you, nine times out of 10, Stacy knows the answer but she's just not allowed to say it. Right? Wow, Lips. that is extraordinarily frustrating. As a guy who spends all day talking, I would not do well at that. But by way of example, we um, there's a bank that we are going to serve a document on. There isn't A bank isn't a person. So who do you actually give the document that you have to serve? It's called a registered agent. So when you set up a company, and this is going to be, check your local jurisdiction, but this is in every state of the union. If there's a company set up, they have to define a person that will be their registered agent that we can physically hand documents to, to say, you've been legally served. You have to respond to this. Okay. Oh, okay. So a registered agent, meaning a representative of the firm being company. served. You the got organization it. Being now, served. there's okay. companies that will say, I'll be your registered agent, and then you can serve that company and there's a way to do it, you find that person. So we had to serve this bank. I haven't haven't dealt with this bank before. I don't know who the registered agent is. So I just go to Stacy. hey, we need to serve this bank. So in doing her research, which she loves to do, she goes on the Florida Secretary of State website, She finds out who the registered agent is. She prepares all the documents that we need to send to the registered agent. She makes them look pretty, make sure we have all the attachments. And then it has to be signed by a lawyer. So she brings me this nice, neat neat package that I review and I get to put my John Hancock on it and like, look at my great work. But Stacy did it all. 
<laughs> and then she sends it off and we send it to our process server and and we serve it on the registered agent. Now, the registered agent sends an email back saying, we're not the registered agent. Stacy loses her shit. <laughs> I am right. I know I'm right. <laughs> and she comes in my office and says, I have an email that I've drafted, but I think you should look at it before I send it. <laughs> okay. And Stacy has this very strongly worded email. And usually I'm the guy in the office that sends those types of emails. So I had to tone hers down. I Basically, didn't use any explicit words, though. I will that's true. Say, it, was, it was very clean. But a lot of synonyms. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely thought them when I was writing them. But she basically says, you are the registered agent. Here's where it is on the Secretary of State website. She attaches everything, right? And she sends it off. And then later she comes back and says, did you see the responsive email? I'm like, the one where they, where they nicely say that you're right, they were wrong, and they'll deal with it accordingly. That we, are you paraphrasing? I want the, I want the details. They, they like, uh, what is it, what does it sound like when an email has a tail between its legs? (laughs) They said, we received your second email. Please disregard the email we sent to you. We'll handle this accordingly. It was very brave. Outstanding. <laughs> you know, but I mean, as a paralegal, a, worth it, right? Hashtag worth it, right? That's, right. A, little, that's a nice little win. <laughs> but that's an example of how powerful paralegals are. Because one, Stacy did it faster than I could have done it. And um, at a lower hourly rate to the client, had everything packaged for me to do a quick review. And it's done. And what clients don't necessarily realize is having the paralegal be your friend and be on your side is really important. I think Stacy said it best when they're the liaison between them and the lawyer and kind of dealing with the customer service aspect because we value every client contact that we have. And we have so many cases like we've talked about before, Pete, like how do you keep them all straight? Well, you keep them all straight because you have a system where you can get to all the information quickly. Mm -hmm. Some cases you remember more than others, but the finite like nuances of a case or something that's like basic, like how many kids, what are their birthdays? I don't remember every client and how many, what the birthday is of the kid. Like I'm lucky to remember my own kid's birthday, but Stacy might come in and say, Hey, Next week, this client's kid's having a birthday. Like, let's make sure that the parenting time is going well. And then I'll make that call because she's on it, right? So there's a lot of little things. Let me ask for for either of you, what is the expectation of of the paralegal, I I guess paralegal writ large, and you, Stacy, in court? Do you ever go to court? Do you ever sit at the table? Is there any sort of an event like that? I I do. I've I've sat in on Zoom hearings. I've actually um, second chaired um, trials before um, with with my assigned attorney. So those are all kind of um, important roles. Uh, either way, I'm taking notes, writing things down, um, noting what exhibits have been entered, omitted or not. Um, and uh, sometimes being a gopher, if, if something needs to be collected as a rebuttal piece, then I'm, you know, I'm there as as attending it, then I'm there and able to do that. Um, so it is very effective um, to have a paralegal, I think. At and the having a quality paralegal, and, and I think laying this out is important, Pete. Yeah. If I am the lawyer in court, sitting at counsel's table. To my left will be Stacy, the paralegal, who's helped prepare all the evidence, all the binders, make sure they have the witness outlines. We've done all the research on anything we think is going to be objectable or not. Our pretrial statement, the statement, you know, the the opening or closing that we have written, like, it's not like she's just walking in and it's all there. She's helped prepare it. So she's It's in her mind. It's in her brain. Mm -hmm. She knows where it is, why it's there, what we're doing. And then next to her is the client. And that buffer between the lawyer and the client, as we talked about with Judge Tibbles, 
hey, when yeah. the when the client's whispering in the lawyer's ear, it's never a good thing. And we give the client a pad of paper and say, any questions you have right down here, pass them to Stacy. If she thinks I need to see him, she'll pass it to me. That's an important system to have because the attorney really needs to listen to what's being said in court, whether it's witness testimony. And so having a paralegal there for the client to kind of, oh, he hasn't said this or this piece of evidence, that's better to be kind of funneled so that the attorney can continue to listen and the and then the paralegal can support the attorney by gathering that information. And sometimes as a paralegal, you've already reviewed all of those documents. So you're also aware that maybe the testimony or there's a rebuttal document that can, you know, refute what is being being said that just, just by having a paralegal there and that kind of support takes it off to the attorney and let, and lets the attorney do his job in court or her job in court more effectively, because if they're not listening to what's going on, they could miss something important, not object to something or just not hear, hear something. And so um, it's, that's another way that a paralegal can kind of uh, add something to by sitting in on a hearing or even a trial. Death, it's the holidays, the harrowing holidays of Halloween. Scaretober, baby. Oh, it is a real fright night, Seth. And what is the scariest thing that you could be dealing with in all seriousness? The scariest thing you could be dealing with is is any sort of accusation or uh, dealing with yourself substance abuse in your divorce case. Am I right? Absolutely. That's why we've teamed up with Soberlink, not only to help individuals going through a divorce prove their sobriety, but also just a way to make sure that you and your kids are safe, especially during the holiday time. Halloween, a lot of drinking, Thanksgiving. Christmas, New Year's, a lot of alcohol consumption. This is a way where you can say, listen, when I'm with the kids and they're under my care, custody, and control, I'm going to be focused on them and I will not be drinking. And Soberlink is going to help you prove that that's what you're doing. Okay, so what is Soberlink? Soberlink is a device and a service. Now, the device is a breathalyzer. It's a fancy breathalyzer that you charge up and you keep with you in your car. You keep with you whenever you need to prove that you are sober. Uh, you blow into Soberlink. It has facial recognition to it. It takes a little picture of you, makes sure that it's you really breathing into the Soberlink device. And then it sends that information uh, into the cloud so that it can go to the people who matter. It can go to uh, it goes to counsel. It can go to the to uh, your co-parent, your former spouse. It, it, you're about to pick up the kids. You want to prove you're sober. Soberlink is going to be the thing to do it for you. Working hard to keep children safe offering a re- this remote alcohol monitoring system. It is the gold standard because of this technology. And the other thing, Pete, yeah. the other thing is, it is third-party independent verification that you're doing what you're supposed to do, and it's not a he said, she said. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Save your bacon. Exactly. So don't miss out on Soberlink's free guide for the upcoming holiday season. You can request it today at www.soberlink.com slash toaster. I uh, w- was talking to a friend over lunch yesterday, and I said was kind of laying out some of the podcasts we were recording, and I said we're going to be doing this uh, episode um, introducing the paralegal role. And he said, oh, paralegal, isn't that like almost a lawyer? I feel like that's a misunderstanding. Just as, you know, to continue our metaphor, nursing is a profession unto itself. Uh, my uh, understanding at this point is being a paralegal is a profession unto itself. Is is there, do you ever have a design to be an attorney? Is this like a, a practice field for you? Or uh, are, are you, uh, tell me tell me how that works. The paralegal uh, is a profession unto itself, but there is a lot of what I would consider matriculation from being a paralegal into looking at being an attorney. Um, mm-hmm. That was something that even crossed my mind. Seth and I were just talking about it the other day, something that crossed my mind back in 2019. And I sat for the LSAT. I was uh, at a firm and it was more guardian ad litem work. I was missing the trial prep. I was missing 
kind of um, high complex cases. So I was like, I'll just go sit for the LSAT. I'll just go to law school. <laughs> and um, it was it was kind of funny. Two days after I got my scores, I joined a firm that was um, in high highly contested, high asset types of cases um, in in the Atlanta area. I'm very new to Tampa. I just moved um, in. Well, I came down in May and joined up. NLG, but um, moved, I guess, bought our house in July down here. So um, Hurricane Ian welcomed us to Florida less than two months after we uh, bought a house. But, you know, at that point, uh, I I determined that um, I just wanted to remain as a paralegal. I really like what I do. I feel that, you know, with the drafting and the research and kind of the knowledge, I enjoy my position. I love working with, with clients and I, and I, I just didn't see how putting JD after my last name would change what, what I like to do. And and there's, there's two things here, Pete and Stacey's would never say this, so I'm just going to say it. <laughs> she says to me, yeah, I took the LSAT, and anything over 160 is a great score. Mm-hmm. Let's just start with that for people who don't know, and, and the crazy mm-hmm. grading system that they have on these standardized tests. Anything over 160, you're doing really well, okay? And she goes, I got a 163, which I remarked, I got a 162. <laughs> <laughs> So Stacey is too kind to say that. Um, And that's what people have a misconception of, that just because you're a lawyer, that you're the smartest guy in the room. Okay. And when Stacey talks about drafting, yes, can Stacey draft a notice of appearance that's pretty much a form? No problem. But what Stacey does is when we get those financial documents in and she sees that, wait a minute, there was a bank transfer from this bank to another bank account. We don't have that other bank account. And now she's doing a letter to the other side saying, hey, we're missing a bank account. Or your client says that they have don't have a Venmo. But on a bank statement, we see transfers to Venmo. Right. And then you're drafting requests for productions, uh, interrogatories, which are sworn questions that people questions that they have to write sworn answers to and how those are worded makes a difference. And when you have a great paralegal that's done it before, understand the concepts, understands the law, understand what we're trying to prove, understand the information we're trying to gather to see whether we can prove our case or not, that first initial drafting, which the first drafting is always the heavy lifting, that can be done at someone at a lower hourly rate that's doing it day in and day out and then have a lawyer review it. And I might tweak it here and there. And then they learn the lawyer's style because sometimes it's just style over substance. So sometimes I'll make a substantive change and say, oh, I'm not doing that. Here's why. And that's just kind of, I might see a bigger part of the case and ultimately I'm responsible. But sometimes I might just be like, oh, this is stylistic. And I work hard not to change the style because if, if the substance is there, I'm good. But ultimately I'm the guy that has to argue it in court. And Stacy appreciates that. Like, yeah, you're the one standing in front of the judge, not me. I'm second chair. And then I can look and roll my eyes and be like, I told him, judge. You know? All the law, none of the responsibility. <laughs> that is so it. I can write all day long and I never have to put my name on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everything came delightful. from Seth. <laughs> but that having that type of person in your corner, and this is stuff clients don't see. Right. It's not like Stacy calls him up and says, hey, I found this, this and this and look at what we did. Like, you know, we'll send it over and, and we'll the client will ultimately see the document and see what we found. But having that first person to talk to when things are rough or if you don't understand what this document is, Stacy can give legal information like, hey, this motion was filed. Here's what it is. The meaning I can't tell you whether it's good or bad or not. I can't give you the analysis, but let me set up a call with Seth. It's already on his desk. He said he was going to review it. Like, you know, that type of stuff uh, really makes a difference. At what point in the in the process do you get involved, Stacey? Like, are you involved from the from the outset meeting the client or how does that work? When will new clients listening to this meet you? 
So sometimes the very first time that they've come into the office and they've met with Seth and they decide to retain the firm, Seth will bring me in, introduce me, and um, they'll they'll take my card and and then kind of the chain of communication is open. Sometimes mm-hmm. they'll come in um, if if their consultation was over the phone, they may come in about a week later and they'll meet the team too. I think it's very important at NLG that the client's um, kind of, uh, come in and meet, meet everybody that's going to be touching their case because our clients aren't just, or our clients aren't just numbers here. They, mm-hmm. they're people with families and a future. And, um, at the end of the day, they, they are kind of a member of our extended family. So I think it's important that, you know, that the team meets them, then, pretty, pretty close to when they actually come in. And we do that regularly, Pete. If they're here and they decide to retain us, I'll just walk by the, and if I'm on a case, it's going to have an associate attorney assigned. It's going to have a paralegal assigned to the case. And I'll walk back and I'll say, hey, Stace, do you have time to meet a new client that's just starting and literally She's smiling because I think the answer is <laughs> probably not, but I'll right. do it anyway. Right. right. But that's exactly right. But she will stop what she's doing in the middle of whatever she is, stop her clock on that other client. Now, if we're getting something filed and we're getting for trial, she might say no. And I always tell the client, I got to see what they're doing. But then to come out and just have that three to five minute interaction to say, I'm here for you. Here's the deal. Here's my card. You need anything. It makes such a different impact in the client experience. Um, And with COVID and with Zoom and phone calls coming in, sometimes it's not as smoothly as we want. But we're working on systems to improve that just to make sure that everyone knows who does what and how to help them. On the back end, Stacey, how long do you uh, keep in touch with clients? You, you mentioned, you know, from a relationship basis. Um, how long are you calling them afterwards to check in? Um, you know, once the case is over, there there are some clients that, that I am still connected to on LinkedIn um, more, more along the lines of, you know, a professional, cl- uh, connection. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, I'll, I would run into them at church after everything was over. So it just, it, it kind of, you know, it, it really kind of depends on the client. I, I yeah. guess, um, you know, if they ever reached out or needed anything, obviously, you know, that connection is already there, but, but there are some that, that I'll see around town or, or like yeah. I said, even, even at church with my kids on a Sunday. So <laughs> when they were little, they're now all, almost all grown up now. At the firm, what is the distribution of paralegals to attorneys that, you know, have, when you look at how many cases you might be working on? Uh, at any given time? Like, do, do cases shift from paralegal to paralegal, or are you pretty much one for the duration? There are two paralegals, and we have four attorneys. Um, the cases are assigned um, by type of cases, by clients, um, sometimes by workload. It really kind of uh, depends. A lot of that is personality based, um, or the types of cases. Um, and what we the- do, Pete, which is different than a lot of firms, Stacy isn't assigned to all of my cases. Mm-hmm. So we like to take the collective group of people that we have and say, okay, Stacy is actually working with all four lawyers on their separate cases. Sure. But then we also have Kevin, who works with all four lawyers on the separate cases, because that way we don't get siloed and create divisions within the firm like, oh, that's my paralegal. She can't help you or what we, we're, we're a team here. And then mm-hmm. Stacy might say, hey, you know, Kaylee does this on her cases, Seth, which you don't. And I'll be like, oh, my God. I didn't know she was doing that. That's a really good idea. I, ne- I never really thought of it that way. So we get the collective betterment, the best practices from everybody. And then it also helps us when Stacy has a very long list. I, I asked her to create an inconsistency of what lawyers do. And let's pick the best one. <laughs> right? And she's like, Seth, that's the only thing I would do all day is write that down. Okay. <laughs> But but that's a way to, for us to funnel it and then pick the best practice. And sometimes, like we said before, it's style over substance. Well, let's just pick one style because 
why are we going to have the paralegals have to adjust their style for four different lawyers? That's just not efficient, right? And that's how we've been able to set up our practice to help what we think is a better ultimate client experience and better work product for the client than how other firms do it. Well, I listen to that as an outsider, and I think that also sort of crushes uh, a bit of the the reputation of attorneys as egoic, right? Like as as like holier than thou, everything is my way or the highway, sort of a sort of a thing. And and I think that's that is a really great sign. Like you talk about, uh, Stacy said early on, like when clients come in, we, we they're we're welcoming them to the family. We want them to know everybody and know that we're all working together to do this. That's a that's a, a great testament to to that desire. And along with that, maybe Stacy just had an issue in Paul's case, and it's an issue that I haven't dealt with in four years. And I'm like, yeah, I had that a long time ago, but I don't really remember, right? And I have to like brush it off. And Stacy's like, I just did that for Paul. I'm like, awesome, (laughs) you know? Yeah, let's do it again. (laughs) Exactly, wash with GP. Right, right. Um, what are we missing? Anything we're missing about uh, about your work, your job, your life uh, that you really want to get in under the under the wire as we wrap up? Do you want me to get off the show and you can talk about how great I am, Stacey? <laughs> well, I feel like that's the only way we're going to get the truth. And get the truth. <laughs> <laughs> we really don't do anything. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if we're gone, nothing gets done. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. It's true. No. Um, um, no, but I, I would say, I, I guess just as far as what, you know, somebody's coming in, they've never had to hire an attorney. They've never had kind of any experience on, on um, you know, how the a firm is set up and how it works. Um, really, a paralegal is there to kind of help everybody stay on track and stay on schedule and answer questions. And, um, it, it's, it's to support a client, whether it's listening to what's going on, um, uh, talking a client off, you know, kind of, um, (laughs) talking them off a ledge, you know, sometimes it's their family and it's your, your kids and your, your finances and, um, you know, having something happen can be quite scary. So, you know, talking to me is, you know, that's, that's another part of my job is to listen and kind of figure out what the bigger issue is. And then taking that issue and saying to my, to the, to the attorney, look, you know, this client called, this is the issue need to give them a call back and that way I can water it down so mm-hmm. that, um, and if something's important, um, and needs to be addressed right away, that's something that a paralegal can also help with for a yeah, client. Yeah. So it's more of a, um, just being able to facilitate that information and streamline it. So what needs to be addressed gets addressed and yeah. it gets addressed as, fast as they can. And look, Stacy comes into my office or maybe I'm coming back from court, right? Or coming out of the podcast. And she says, this client needs to talk to you. Okay, what's going on? Boom, boom, boom. Gives me the rundown. And Stacy might have been on the phone with that client for 15 minutes, but Stacy's going to be able to, to tell me that in about 30 seconds to a minute. Right. Yes, I, I have my very own fast pass for Seth's office. <laughs> I said I needed one. I do. I have it on my. I have it on my desk. I, I get to my fast pass. We I have outside my line. office. It's six feet apart because we're still careful with COVID. You know, we yeah. got the little dots leading to my yeah. office. <laughs> little feet. <laughs> I said, I said I needed That's my fantastic. fast pass now that I'm in Florida. So yeah, right, I need, I need more right, beer. right, right, right. Well, uh, this is a treat. I think the bottom line, if you're listening to this and you're uh, you're you're thinking about gearing up for the your own divorce process, first we're sorry, it's hard, but the paralegal is going to be your best friend. So help by fostering that relationship. And pretty much, if it's Stacy, do what she tells you when she tells you to do it. Everything's going to be fine. It's what the attorneys do. Uh, so <laughs> exactly Stacey, what I was thinking, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Stacy, for coming on and, and teaching us and, and teaching me for sure uh, a little bit more about what you do. We so, so appreciate it. All right. Now, Stace, don't we have three things to file before the end of the day? What are you doing? Wasting your time on this show? <laughs> I don't know. I have a subpoena out right now. It's supposed to be served in the next 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I'm Stacey just ruin, sits there with like... I'm about to ruin somebody's weekend. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> and I'm laughing. Well, Why is that this, funny? Yeah, it's this that is funny. not funny. That's not funny. Uh, well, uh, thank you so much. And uh, Seth, uh, as always, uh, you work with good people. You, you have you've set the bar uh, yourself and you raise it with every person in your firm. So um, uh, we sure appreciate uh, being a part of your lives. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget, if you have a question, head over to uh, howtosplitatoaster.com. And uh, there's a button right there. You can uh, just ask a question and you'll get your divorce questions answered right here on the show. Uh, thank you, everybody. We appreciate your time and attention on behalf of Stacey Ray Sinella, the best paralegal, America's favorite paralegal, and Seth Nelson, America's favorite divorce attorney. I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you back here next week on How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships. Seth Nelson is an attorney with NLG Divorce and Family Law with offices in Tampa, Florida. While we may be discussing family law topics, How to Split a Toaster is not intended to, nor is it providing legal advice. Every situation is different. If you have specific questions regarding your situation, please seek your own legal counsel with an attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction. Pete Wright is not an attorney or employee of NLG Divorce and Family Law. Seth Nelson is licensed to practice law in Florida.